फिक्स इनकम पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजमेंट पार्ट वन फर्स्ट लर्निंग आउटकम इफ यू रिमेंबर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट बेंच मार्क्स एंड देन वी सेड यू कैन हैव इधर एन इंडेक्स एज अ बेंच मार्क और यू कैन हैव लाइबिलिटी एज अ बेंच मार्क इफ यू डिसाइड टू यूज इंडेक्स इट कुड यू कुड इधर यूज अ पैसिव स्ट्रैटेजी और यू कुड यूज अ एक्टिव स्ट्रैटेजी पैसिव वी नो मैनेज अग्रीज विद द फोकास्ट एक्टिव मैनेजर विल ट्राई टू outperform the forecast using liability as a benchmark you would maintain portfolio to meet liabilities next learning outcome was bond indexing strategy so two terms that we saw active return is difference between portfolio and index return tracking error is standard deviation of active return so in the cfa curriculum uh, end of the chapter question they have in fact put a question which requires you to calculate tracking error and then how will you calculate tracking error you would calculate difference between portfolio and index returns and then you would calculate standard deviation of that value then we saw there were five strategies pure bond indexing enhanced with matching primary risk factors enhanced with small risk factor mismatches larger risk factor mismatches full blown active you can also come across a question where they will give you a portfolio composition and they will give you a uh, index composition or benchmark composition and then you would be required to determine which of the following five strategies are being followed okay so the trick to remember is that if there are differences in total duration if there are differences in sector duration sector composition then there is a good chance you are in the last two category but if these primary risk factors are same then you would be in one of the three categories with uh, in the enhanced indexing maturing primary risk factors the important word we want to remember is sampling you are trying to outperform pure bond indexing by reducing your transaction cost and in this category enhanced indexing by small risk factor mismatches you are trying to recover your you are trying to recover the administrative cost then the four criteria is based on which we would select a benchmark index so income risk of the index and income risk of the client should be same market value risk should be same credit risk should be same liability framework risk including the liquidity risk this should be same so these are the four categories then criticism of uh, why bond market index cannot be used easily as a benchmark so we first saw the definition of valid benchmark that it should be investable so we saw certain points number one securities are heterogeneous and illiquid risk characteristics could change quickly then we discussed about bumps problem remember it then various vendors could appear <coughs> index from different vendors could appear similar but it could be different so we discussed about callability of the bonds right so prima facie on paper it might look same but maybe index will have major proportion of securities to be callable your portfolio might not then difficult to find an index for the investor that's why there is a need for custom indexes next learning outcome was on aligning risk exposure so match aggregate exposure to benchmark exposure second was sell matching remember sell matching and third was multi factor modeling then what are what were those primary risk factors so duration key rate duration this also includes pvd present value distribution key rate duration present value distribution are more or less same concept the difference is key rate duration will have exposure only to key rate maturities year 2 year 5 year 7 year 10 whereas present value distribution you will find out exposure for each of the maturity at right? year 1 2 3 4 5 so question is asked can we relate pvd with babel and bullet yes so typically babels will have higher present value distribution at the beginning higher present value distribution at the end correct whereas in bullet you would expect higher present value distribution towards the end towards the end then quality spread duration contribution sector duration contribution sector coupon maturity sell wedge issuer exposure these were your primary risk factors then we saw some calculations on total return analysis we use the word use the word horizon yield horizon yield 
then what is recommended to combine total return with scenarios classical immunization so if this is the total maturity of the bond if this is the effective duration if you able if you are able to match effective duration with the maturity of liability then you've been able to achieve classical immunization if your holding period is less than that you're exposed to price risk if holding period is more you're exposed to reinvestment risk right and then this section we call positive duration gap this section is negative duration gap certain important points here price risk and reinvestment risk will work in the opposite direction select a bond whose duration matches liability horizon portfolio ceases to be immunized when number 1 interest rate fluctuates more than once or second time passes so it works for only one shift in the interest rate the portfolio which has lowest reinvestment risk will do the best job of immunization so that means the best bond that you can select for immunization could be a zero coupon bond then rebalancing for desired dollar duration so certain formulas number 1 effective duration of a portfolio is simply weighted average there are again questions in curriculum based on this los dollar duration is bond value into effective duration into 1% rebalancing ratio is target or desired dollar duration divided by current dollar duration spread duration we know it will show us the sensitivity of 1% change in spread to the change in value of the bond and then different spreads that we've seen nominal z spread and os then extensions to classical immunization okay this sentence just in case you don't remember this classical immunization strategies will not be sufficient in managing a portfolio to immunize against a liability can you tell me why classical immunization is not su sufficient because it just takes care of one time change in the interest rate so therefore we can have certain extensions the first one is multifunctional duration so along with having classical immunization you also try to match duration of the key maturities so that's multifunctional duration second multiple liability immunization so if there are multiple cash flows for each cash flow you try to build it separately relaxation of minimum risk requirement that means trying to increase risk of your portfolio within acceptable limits and then the last one was contingent which is a mix of active plus passive then if present value of assets are greater than liability we would be on active if present value of assets are less then we would be on passive economic surplus was present value of assets minus present value of liabilities do you remember calculations of this learning outcome then immunization risk we looked at three components interest rate contingent claim cap risk what is contingent claim callability right so if you have a liability which is non callable but if you try to immunize that with an asset which is callable then you would not be able to match the risk factors then immunization of single liability versus multiple liabilities versus generated cash flow single liability there were two rules tell me which ones immunization for single liability which were the two rules present value of asset would be same as present value of liability second duration of asset would be same as duration of liability for multiple liability there were three rules the first two were same which is the third one the present the distribution the range of distribution of duration of assets will be higher than range of distribution of duration of liability the easier way to understand this topic is that you are providing yourself some flexibility plus if you have higher range of distribution of assets and there are also convexity benefits agree irrespective of which direction interest rate moves convexity will work in your favor because you have better duration or higher range of duration with your set of assets then uh, risk minimization versus return mag maximization learning outcome we said if it is uh, classical immunization we are focusing on risk minimization but when we are on to contingent we are focusing on return maximization and cash flow matching 
so again <coughs> there is a lot of discussion uh, in the text which talks about difference between multiple liability matching versus cash flow matching so how you want to think is that multiple liability matching is relatively less strict that means you are not precisely matching cash flows with the liability you are creating certain range whereas cash flow matching would be more precise and therefore it would be more strict but because you want to do cash flow matching it would become relatively more expensive multiple liability matching would be relatively less expensive are we together on this